The runway is ready, the terminal finished. And tonight we can show you inside the remote digital control centre at Western Sydney Airport. Throwing out a 100-year-old aviation tradition of manned control towers, this centre is an Australian first. In a paddock in Western Sydney, a mass of metal poles becomes a 45 metre tower. Now crawling with cameras, it may not look like state of the art technology, but it is. Western Sydney International Airport will be the most high tech airport of any of the airports we have here in Australia. These 25 high definition cameras capturing a 360 degree live feed of the new Western Sydney International Airport, beamed in real time to air traffic control who aren't on site but 17 kilometres away in Eastern Creek. This is actually pulling in a range of rich information to be able to better inform our controllers to be able to make decisions in real time. Smarter than the human eye, these cameras are infrared so they can see in low light and bad weather. Hopefully less delays and cancellations due to fog or low visibility. Each camera has got their own little um, windscreen wiper systems. AI will also feed extra data onto these screens, meaning air traffic controllers will have more intelligence in their sights than in a traditional manned tower. It's first of kind for Australia, but it's not first of kind for the world. It is used in other countries around the world, and so we're harnessing their knowledge as well. A modern-day movement already in London, soon to be rolled out in Canberra and potentially even further. We're absolutely looking at the roadmap for the future to see how we can use our digital aerodrome solutions um, at other airports. Passengers will have a similar, albeit more high-tech experience here at the airport. Once they're through security and on the tarmac, they'll be in the hands of air traffic controllers back at the control centre watching every move on camera. They'll be switched on next month for extensive testing before the first passenger flights take off in late 2026. Sophie Upcroft, Nine News.